Hey there, fellows. So check this out. We are doing something rather interesting in this video. Apparently, people are really digging the transparent things we make. The intake manifold, the oil filter, oil pan. We got a bunch of interesting comments, and there was a good one suggesting we try a thermostat. Here's the idea. We have a thermostat, we also have these lovely tubes, so let's put together a see-through thermostat housing and see how it works. We've all handled one of these before, right? You've got all of these springs, a diaphragm and whatever. Not many people have seen how this works, though. So let's make us a transparent thermostat housing, fit a thermostat to it, carefully assemble everything, fit it to an engine and see how the whole thing functions. Okay, let's do this. So if you haven't been in our merch shop for a while, we have added a bunch of cool new stuff. Such as these handmade wallets and holders made out of genuine leather. It's a must-have for any dude who needs a reliable and convenient place to keep his documents. We also have an assortment of t-shirts, caps and key fobs with a fresh design. There is a lot to cover, so better you head on over to our shop and check out what we got. For anybody who places an order right now, I'll slip in a card with my picture and my personal autograph. Make sure to use PayPal to pay for your order, so that it goes through with no issues. Add something new to your collection of Garage 54 merch, and receive a card with my autograph. So head on over to our online shop, and the link of course is gonna be in the description. We make a transparent thermostat. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Take a look at what we've made. We are looking at a rather lovely transparent thermostat. The thermostat itself is actually for a different car, but that doesn't matter. We decided not to use the stock one for a lot of And so now, yeah, this looks... The tubes are aligned slightly differently. And as for how this works, well, the coolant is blowing through the small circle in the beginning, meaning it is going through here like so. But when the coolant warms up, the thermostat is set into motion, with it blocking off one port and opening up another one. And now you've got the coolant flowing through the large circle. And so here we did our best to replicate that effect. So this constitutes the small circle. The liquid is going to be flowing like so in that phase. But when the thermostat starts to crack open and direct the coolant to the large circle, it'll block off one of these upper ports, and the coolant will be flowing exclusively through the large circle. After that, it'll eventually cool off, close the large circle and revert to the small cycle. Is it going to be smooth or erratic? What do you think? They're telling me that, I mean... We're not sure whether it'll assume a certain position right away, or it'll get there gradually. Is it going to be transferring the cold liquid from the large circle 
in like doses? I guess we better install it and see it all for ourselves. Let's get to it. Okay, so check this out. We've decided to fit the thermostat here in order to have a better view. And so that we can backlight the whole thing. There is a slight issue, though. You see, the thing is, doesn't matter what we fill the system with, water, antifreeze, it's all gonna be one color. Meaning we're not gonna be... We're not gonna be able to see the water or the coolant. The point is... We're not going to get a clear view of how it's flowing, of how it's diverting between cycles. But one of the boys remembered an interesting fact about champagne. Yeah, that's right. Which you'd add shimmer to. And so we took a bit of shimmer, which isn't food grade, but who cares. We added it to the water, and look at this. Like, even the slightest bit of movement results in these particles, well, you can see some refraction going on, and that allows you to track the direction in which the liquid is flowing. Might have added a bit too much, though. Okay, let's start by pouring in some clear water and see what comes out of that. And later on we'll add some of this wonderful colored water. Okay, let's do this. Okay, we've poured in some water, we have a good view. Now there is a small air pocket. That's because we glued all of this together. The air has nowhere to go, and a bit has accumulated. What matters is the port and the valve itself, everything is in water, and the air in this vicinity isn't that big of a concern. Okay, start the car, warm it up, and look on. Let's have a look and... oh! Holy cow! You can see the water flowing after all. The water pump is doing an excellent job. I take it we don't have a gauge to measure the flow rate, right? Why is there air in there, Sergey? Look at that, how fast it flows when you rev it. That's pretty amazing. The intensity of the fluid flowing around the thermostat. It is really circulating at some insane speed. Yeah, that is really fast. And you never even would have seen it otherwise. Also, it appears to have flushed the engine block and the radiator of any rust. You can tell by the color of the water. But so far we've been on the small circle. Here we have the large circle, and with the thermostat having yet to open, the water is clear for now. It is getting pretty warm, though. I'd say it's about maybe at 45 to 50 centigrade, maybe even a tad more. It's not hurting my hand yet. So the engine is warming up, that's all good. And hopefully you guys noticed how we screwed up slightly. Well, yeah. But switch it off before something does happen. Come on now. As for what was about to happen, the way the fluid was circulating, here we have the in point, this is the out, and once the thermostat opens, that'll result in, well, obviously it's going to open up the large circle, but it's also going to block off the flow through here. In other words, the thermostat isn't going to allow any circulation whatsoever. And so these two tubes, we're gonna have to swap over ASAP. We should be seeing the water flow through the large circle very soon. This is cold like it should be. But this is hot. This will heat up as soon as the valve cracks open. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Okay, look at that. The debris is starting to get picked up. It's cracking open. There we go. Yep. The debris that was sitting at the bottom of the housing is being picked up. It's moving, meaning the thermostat is opening up. This is starting to get warm. Getting warmer and warmer. And here you can clearly see some movement going on. With the debris being picked up. So apparently the water pump is pulling the water out of the radiator, which is definitely a good thing. Nice. And that air bubble is slowly crawling this way. The hose is getting really hot. It's now open, and we have full-on circulation happening. Now from where I'm sitting, I have a very good view of how that dirt is being picked up. All that residue. How it swirls, goes up, and eventually winds up here. So the water is now mostly flowing around the large circle. And it's doing so pretty quickly. You know, I don't think we'd be able to see anything if it weren't for the air bubbles. Okay, guys, here's what we'll be doing. We've still got some water in there. And now we're going to take some of this colored liquid. Oh, yeah, look at that wonderful pearlescent effect. We should be able to see it flow very well, I reckon. So let's pour it in. The engine is running. That is good. Okay. Yep, something is definitely happening. The thermostat is now open. And the water is going around the large circle through the radiator. There's the colored water. It isn't particularly intense, though. It's flowing slowly, slowly but surely. Still going, and the thermostat is staying open. Seems to be going well. I take it... It's only starting to open. So apparently... It's not being fed in portions. The valve is open and we have continuous flow of liquid. So here's what we're looking at. The valve has blocked off the small circle. It's all large circle at this point. So we've just drained a bit of the colored water. We thought that there's not enough color. So we're adding some. And starting the car again, hoping to see a brighter picture. Now look at this go. You can see everything very well. No, it actually seems as if it's opening and closing. What's that all about? We can see everything very well now. 
What a great thing we've acquired. I mean, who even knows the word shimmer? But we looked around and we found some. Yeah, you can really tell what's going which way. The direction in which the liquid is flowing. Right here you can see how a thermostat works. So now that this is getting really warm, it's flowing faster and faster. You immediately notice it. With the thermostat, blocking off the small circle and diverting flow to the large one. Yeah, that's it. You can see that. It's blocked off. Flow through this port. It's all going through the large circle now. That is very obvious at this point. We can't really see the shimmer moving, though, with how fast this is flowing. This is moving very fast. The valve is currently fully open, and in theory any air that was in the system should find its way out now. There are barely any air bubbles, though they do sometimes come through. I have no idea where they're coming from. I mean, theoretically, this should have been purged. Spray it. Now we're going to go ahead and cool the radiator off with a bit of water. The temperature should drop, closing the thermostat, reverting flow back to the small circle. Yeah, this is exactly what we expected would happen. We can now see the shimmer we used for coloration, the flow rate is dropping, which tells us that the thermostat valve is closing gradually. It's pretty much come to a dead stop. There will still be a tiny bit coming through continuously, I think. Thermostat motion over the entire span of the experiment. Video has been sped up by 50 times. The engine is nice and warm. Switch it off, please. There we go. And what do we see? <laughs> now nah, there it goes. It has settled. Okay, see that? We've shut the car down. The thermostat is open. And the liquid is circulating on its own. The cold water is moving down. The warm water is moving up. And while the thermostat is still open, it is gradually going to be flowing through the large circle. And once it closes, it might start circulating around the small circle. And by means of this circulation, the block is hot, the cylinders and everything else. Anyway, we can be sure that the circulation is going to prevent any overheating. What's interesting about this is, boiler type heaters work by pretty much the same principle. You plug it into a power outlet, and some of them are even sold without a pump. 
Because with such circulation, with hot fluid going up and cold fluid making its way down, you'll get all the flow you need. The temperature will gradually get there, like pre-start heat. Okay, so we had a look and this was really cool. You've got gradual flow happening. And even with pretty modest radiator volume, it took quite a while before the small circle was completely blocked off. The two streams were slowly mixing with each other, but then I mean that's what you need a radiator for, to perform cooling functions, even with no air flowing through it. Even with us being indoors, it still takes a while for it to warm up. So yeah, the bigger the radiator, the less chance you have of overheating. We saw it all for ourselves, this was a lot of fun, and watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.